Hey there, welcome to another Ask Me Anything session where I'm answering all your questions about the book publishing industry and writing a stronger story. I love these sessions because I get to hear directly from you, my viewers, about what's on your mind, what challenges you're facing. So I wanna thank you so much for continuing to engage and keep those questions coming. To get some housekeeping out of the way, before we get started, please make sure you've subscribed to my channel and hit that like button while you're at it. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and helps me build this amazing community. I also have a free resource in the description below that I want you to leverage and use for your own purposes. That is my free story self-assessment. It's a worksheet designed to help you evaluate and reflect on your current work in progress and figure out where you need to potentially improve your story to take it to the next level. The best part is it's going to sign you up for my newsletter where I provide exclusive insights that you will not find anywhere on my channel. So do not miss out on that. Without further ado, let's dive into the first question today. Roughly how many agents would you recommend submitting your work to at one time? With the submission process taking so long, where is the balance between making progress and not spamming the industry? Great question here. I recommend taking the approach of batching your queries and sending out between six to 12 queries at a time, and then waiting a few weeks to see if you get any responses, and then sending out another batch of six to 12 queries. You don't have to be super, super prescriptive about it. Take a look at the list of agents that you're interested in, make sure that they're open to queries, and continue sending out queries periodically in that way. The reason I recommend batching queries is because that gives you a chance to hear back from agents and there is a possibility that they could give you some helpful feedback that you then want to apply to your future queries. For instance, maybe you wanna tweak the way you're pitching the story or you want to actually tweak the opening pages that you include with your query and batching them in that way gives you the opportunity to do so, so that your future queries are going to have that stronger query package. Oftentimes, writers reach out to me and say, I've written to X number of agents and no one has gotten back to me, what do I do? The answer is query more agents, send out another batch. It really does take that much time and often takes dozens of queries to get a positive response. So really just keep at it. Don't worry about feeling like you're spamming the industry. The only way where you would be spamming is if you are reaching out to the same literary agent or reminding them over and over of your query, which you don't want to do, but you can always reach out to more agents. So keep at it. Here's another querying related question. How much of the story do you divulge for the prospective agent in a query letter? Do you provide the answers to twists or do you hint at them and maintain the mystique? I heard you once say that the description you provide could one day prove to be an effective book jacket. But in that case, I certainly wouldn't unveil the juiciest bits of information since writing can often be centered on withholding them. What is the most enticing way to structure a book description for an agent? Great question here. And I wanna talk a little bit about the differences between what I call the plot blurb, which is the description that goes in the body of the query letter and the synopsis document, which is a separate file that you only send to literary agents if they specifically request it. The plot blurb is what it sounds like you are talking about and that should absolutely not give away all the twists and should not give away the ending. That is what should sound more like the book description copy. It should ultimately be like a movie trailer of your book. You only want to tease the main conflict. So I typically recommend divulging about the first third or the first fourth of what happens in your story. You really just wanna describe kind of the inciting incidents, those first events of the plot, and then tease the main conflict to come. When we are talking about a synopsis, which again is a separate document, it's a fully practical, frankly kind of bland document that really just lays out your plot beat by beat. In that, you're going to give away everything. You're going to reveal what the twists are, what the ending is, how the characters pan out, all of it. And again, you only send that if an agent specifically requests it. Some agents like to evaluate the synopsis as part of their evaluation of the query. 
Others don't want to know what happens in the story until they read it. As for some tips on how to write both of these documents, I have separate videos that go into how to write the plot blurb effectively and how to write the synopsis effectively. So I'll add those to the description so you can check those out for a deeper dive. Here's an interesting question. Is there anyone you can bribe to make the agenting publishing process go quicker? Any other gray area tactics you can employ to shave off some time? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is no. I certainly do not recommend attempting to bribe any agent or publishing professional. That is only going to strike them the wrong way, especially if they are a reputable person in the industry and is going to make them less likely to want to take you on as an author. In fact, if there's any agent or someone who is saying they work in the publishing industry who is trying to get a bribe from you and is saying you can pay me this or you can do this for me and I'm going to get your manuscript in front of editors or in front of agents, that's probably a scam. The industry has its quirks, the industry takes a long time, the industry is frustrating, but it is the way that it is, unfortunately. And there's really nothing you can do to weasel your way into getting the outcome that you want. Really what agents and publishers want from you is just that perseverance and you continuing to dedicate yourself to your story and follow the standards to getting a literary agent and then getting a book deal. I've seen some conversations among agents online about them feeling very uncomfortable when authors try to pitch them in person by like showing up at their office and things like that. That is absolutely not a good way about trying to get your query noticed and could actually come across to the publishing professionals as harassment. So stick to the tried and true querying process. It sucks, I get it, I totally understand, but it is the way that the industry works and that is the path forward for ultimately getting a literary agent. Anything else is likely only going to discourage them from representing you. Here's another question. I recently received what appears to be a form rejection, not a good fit for me, from a literary agent. Out of courtesy, I feel I should email a quick thanks since the agent took the time to read my query and respond but I wonder if I'd only be clogging their inbox, what do you advise? There is no need to respond to a rejection from a literary agent. They are absolutely not expecting it, and frankly, if they see it, they're likely just going to delete the email. So don't take the time. I appreciate that you appreciate the time that they took to respond to your query and that you want to give that courtesy acknowledgement, but with querying, it is just not necessary. and it's not going to make any difference to the literary agent, so don't even worry about it. All right, we have time for one more question here. I'm writing a book with four self-contained storylines that all converge at the end of the book. With the way that I've structured it, it makes the most sense for me to order it like a collection of smaller books by finishing one story before I start another. However, you mentioned in one of your other videos that I could risk losing my audience if I don't introduce all of the storylines within the first 50 pages or so, what should I do in this case? So yes, the structure that I see more commonly adopted and which I feel is typically more effective in keeping the reader engaged is to break up each of the storylines so that we switch between them at a relatively even cadence from the beginning to the end of the story, rather than having the novel essentially divided into four distinct parts and kind of read like a series of different stories that are totally independent. That said, there is no one size fits all for writing a novel and your structure could very well work effectively. I would say that the key is to ensure at the end of the day that the reader is equally invested in all of the storylines. That is what I am trying to achieve when I say we switch through the storylines at a relatively even cadence because that means that the reader isn't suddenly picked up and then dropped into a whole other character's plotline and storyline midway through the novel, right? By introducing them all from the beginning, the reader is engaged and intrigued by all of them from the beginning. But if you are able to keep the reader engaged in each of the stories independently, then you have also accomplished that and your structure could work totally well. So try to think through that transition moment. Once the reader finishes that first story, that first character storyline that you have completed, what is then going to make them compelled to read the next story? Is there some kind of nugget or detail that you can drop in that initial story that feeds into the next one? Is there maybe a question you can subtly present in the first storyline that then gets answered by the next one? What is going to make the reader want to keep reading after they finish that first story? 
That's something that you need to work out on your end to discover if this structure is actually going to work and keep the reader engaged. Keep the questions coming. If you have a question you'd like to submit, leave it in the comments here. This is the cue I use when I go through and answer my questions. So I would love to hear what's on your minds and of course help out however I can. As I mentioned earlier, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe and grab your free story self-assessment waiting for you in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and happy writing.